a candidate representing a Labour Party. So let's uh, welcome uh, Mr. Peter Obi, C-O-N, on the show. <laughs> Excellency. Thank you. Good evening, my brother. I greet you. I greet you specially. Same from here. Okay. I know we've, we've been putting you through a lot of uh, stress. I I was told that uh, you had to go to Niger. You just came back from the UK, from UK. You had to quickly dash to Kaduna. I mean, how has it been? I mean, shortly going around and making sure that uh, the mission is accomplished. How has it been so far? Like every other person looking for a job, wherever they have interviewed, you have to go. If you apply for a job, there's no way you're looking for a job, you apply to different companies. And when they schedule it that you have to go, whether it's convenient or it's not convenient for you, you have to go there. I'm looking for a job, so I have to be everywhere for the interview. Well, <laughs> I like I like the sound of that. You just said I'm looking for a job. So for you, uh, this is a job, and of course, service to to humanity. And when when we put this up, a lot of people put up their tweets and their comments saying that you will find time for us. Uh, you will find time to, to come out. I, I know Elvis has some of the clips, you know, to, to pop up where they said, yes, this is one man that definitely would come and honor us. And of course, you, you, you have done that. And Nigerians are indeed uh, very, very happy. A couple of questions are set aside for you. A couple of questions here, and we're going to be taking all the questions one uh, by one. And uh, the very first one I'll, uh, that's coming in is saying, how will you tackle the issue of application of federal allocations of funds uh, to the de development of states? How would you tackle the issue of uh, application of federal allocation of funds to the development of the states? Well, uh, while I did not um, see, I probably need more suggestion of that question. I probably need more suggestion of that question, but uh, if the states see, when they get their allocation and they see what the federal government is doing, because what, what has happened over the years is that there's no proper alignment between the local government, the state, and the federal. Having said that at the state level, I saw this. The reason why you have federal, you have economic council, which comprises of the vice presidential, uh, vice president of the country, with all the state governors, and you have the same thing, State Economic Council, which is supposed to be local government chairman with the deputy governor as chairman. The reason why this is established or is in our constitution, that there's supposed to be an alignment between the local government, the state government, and federal government. In development process, like if I always use my example that I use people who don't know, Nigeria was a signatory to MDG, President Development Goals. But why we failed is that while other countries that were signatory to it mainstream it into their development agenda by making sure that the local government, regional government, and national government had a role on what each was to do. To be able to achieve such, but I believe I use something like education. The federal, the local government is supposed to be in charge of primary education. Hmm. State is supposed to be in charge of about secondary education, while the federal government is supposed to be in charge of sort of tertiary. So there was these are things that, but there is no proper alignment. So what I would do 
from ensuring that they utilize their funds effectively is to ensure that we, we start aligning it the way other countries of the world are doing it. Hello, Excellency, are you still there? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, there are a couple of other questions coming in by, you know, coming from our people. They, they are bothering me. I can, if, I, I keep, I, if I start popping them up one by one, everybody is saying, I have a question, I have a question. But I know it's not every question you, you can take on, on this live. Uh, but for me, I That's personally want to know how, what gave birth to this mission, this vision, this movement for you. There must be something that propelled you to say, yes, it's time for action. It's time to do what you have to do. What, what gave birth to the idea in the direction of the step that you're taking right now to become the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Well, if you look at what has happened to Nigeria in the, in, um, the past up to the present, you will see that we become worse in all ramifications, in all measures. You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday where I said, now that Nigeria, since this particular republic has started, have failed completely. So the person tried to, you know, convince me not in everywhere and everything, in every area and all that. And I said to him, let me tell you, if you go to exam and they ask you question A, I answer question B. No matter how good you are with question B, you have failed. The Nigeria as a country has failed in question of development in this republic. There's a only one measure of development, and that is Human Development Index. And I said, this index is measured on three things. One is health. I said, if you look at it, our life expectancy is almost 20 years below the global average. Global average, I think, is 72.8 or thereabouts. about, call it about 72. We are about 54, 55. So we're about 20%, 20 years off. So we failed. Our primary health care have just collapsed. I said, so we failed. Number two is education. I said, if you look at the literacy rates, we're low. And we have the highest number of out of school children, which is about 20 million. So we failed. Number three is per capita, which you can discover as pulling people out of poverty. Within this period, we have thrown more people into poverty than when we started. Because when we started, Nigeria did not have 100 million people living in poverty, in a multidimensional poverty. Now we have 1,003 million. So if you look at these three things, I will have four failed. So it doesn't matter whether we build bridges, build flyovers, build anything, build school, build that. The only way we measure our failed. Then I can now show you other countries about, I showed you about six countries, that the HDI was low as I was when we started, they are now either medium or high. They've moved in different directions. So now what we need to do now is to, so what you're seeing now is cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. I met the British Minister of Development in Africa on Monday in London. And I said to him, when he asked me a question, what is happening? I said, 
is cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years that we now have almost near 40 percent unemployment because about 30 35 percent unemployment and we have almost over 50 percent due to unemployment that if you have 15 percent unemployment in london you the minister cannot leave the office you you too eat your life so we have millions of youths who don't know where the next meal will come from and you think they can go home and sleep no they will do whatever they can to leave so we need to do something to ask and start pulling them out of poverty so for me having seen that the direction we're traveling we the wrong route our, our compass is not pointing to the right direction and we're not moving in the right direction and everything and the thing is deteriorating that was why i decided to get involved And we also have with us tonight, Mr. Peter Obi. It's the AY Show. In case you are meeting me for the first time, my name is Acapella. I speak the truth. I fear nobody. After all, Nigeria, I say, would die alive before I die. I'm very angry with Jesus. Very, very angry. The Bible describes Jesus as all-knowing. That means he knows the end from the beginning. So you are saying this problem we are going to in this country. Jesus will not say go up. Be quiet. Ma assume, say forget. Then on Friday, yeah, you just die. And you have to die with only two thieves. This one let us all go kill them. Can you die if you want if you need this? It's the AY show. Okay, okay. All right, we're back. We're sorry for that uh, break in transmission. Of course, you know, it's part of the repairs that we are asking for the right candidates to come and fix in our nation, which includes every sector put together. Now, I was uh, going to ask the, a question on uh, uh, concerning insecurity in Nigeria. What is your plan to tackle insecurity? This is one of the questions uh, popped in by one of your lovers and followers? Well, you know, the insecurity we have in Nigeria is not that the enemy is more formidable or stronger than the government. However, it is because of lack of responsive leadership to that issue, as well as poor governance of our security architecture. That is what we need to tackle by reviewing the entire security architecture to have proper alignment between what I've said before, the three level policing, federal, state, and local, get the security agents to work together. Because right now, everybody is on his own. So we deal with it differently. And I can tell you without giving you everything in detail, we are prepared to deal with it. As well as start doing what other nations have done in order to get a security 
to work as a family. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we are from insecurity, of course. Uh, we're also going to uh, ask another very important question. I'm a filmmaker, and uh, this one came from uh, a movie group. They said this question must be asked. Um, uh, it says, uh, Nigeria is ready to meet the blockbuster or global standards of filming. Uh, what is your vision for the entertainment industry in regards to government grants and collaborations for filmmakers? If you look at one, I, when I spoke to the Chatham House, I didn't mention clearly that Nigerians, especially the young ones, use a very entrepreneurial in areas of business, areas of science, technology, entertainment, sports. And these are areas we intend to invest. We tend to invest in it because one, it will help our building entrepreneurs. It will help to pull people out of poverty. It will help in uniting and changing the country. So is it not um, something anybody can be it's something we have already put, knowing what is able to do with it in countries, after countries. As of today, Brazil have used sports, Jamaica, to put their people out of poverty. Sure. Countries have used entertainment to put their people out of poverty. And these are some of the things that are uniting the country. One area you can agree with me that the country don't have too much division is area of entertainment and area of sports. So if we are saying we are going to secure and unite the country, these are areas we are going to encourage. And it has a lot of ways you can use it to create the new Nigeria we envisage when we say a new Nigeria is possible. These are areas to tackle, these are areas to create new jobs, areas so many things can happen. Okay, Excellency, joining us is one of uh, Nigeria's uh, prominent actor. Um, I'm going to bring him online now. Uh, his name is uh, Deyemi Okolao. He's one of the prominent actors in the, the, the movie industry. He has a question or two to, to ask. Uh, Deyemi, how are you doing, Deyemi? I'm very well, thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, loud and clear. His Excellency is here, and uh, of course, uh, you. We said earlier that you have some questions uh, to ask. So, what are your questions? Is waiting. Um, first of all, it is an honor to be here, uh, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for for listening to the voice of the youth and attending this this forum. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Bye. Anytime. Um, so my question goes as thus, because you've answered one of the questions that I had in mind about the entertainment industry, especially with regards to Nollywood. Um, but, sir, we know that many Nigerian youth are leaving the country, uh, primarily because of our you know, worsening economy which has been fostered by bad economic policies by both the executive arm of the government as well as the CBN. Uh, this would not have been the case if Nigerian youth had globally relevant skills that could earn them foreign exchange, and also if this system actually allowed us to carry out transactions seamlessly across borders. It's very challenging to do business outside, of, you know, from outside the country to earn income from outside the country. Uh, please, sir, uh, so the, for my first question, it is what steps could you possibly take to, first of all, reverse this drain, this our youth leaving the country in droves? And also, um, what steps would um, help to improve our ability to do business outside the country, even while we are living in the country? Um, 
for my second uh, question, sir. Uh, from 1967 to 1970, um, even though I'm a student of engineering, I, I'm a lover of history. Um, Nigeria went through a civil war, which especially claimed the lives of millions of Igbo people. Since then, till now, the federal government has hardly acknowledged this monumental disaster. So my question is, how would you finally seek justice for the lives that were lost during the Biafran genocide? Thank you very much, sir. Well, I have three questions now. Two questions. One has to do with the Nigerian youth and the economy. Yeah, one has to do with Nigerian youth. Number two is how, how we can continue business exactly. outside Nigeria. Yes, sir. Number three is seeking justice for yes, those sir. who are killed in the past. So that was our third three question. Question number one, there's nothing you can do to reverse people leaving the country, except to have a country that is well governed, one, by securing it, People cannot continue to live in an insecure place. Ensure that you create an enabling environment where people can live and thrive. So a society of law and order, a society where people can genuinely work hard and earn a decent living. You can't ask people, when you're not doing the right things, to just sit down and die. They need to go where they have to earn a living and everything, because they have to live. So for me, it is important that people understand that. To get them to come back is to reverse that trend, to ensure that A, things are working, they're secured, so they can live, Things are working. They have a viable opportunity to earn a living. Number two is that people want to live here and do business outside. I'm actually a bit, a bit astonished by that. We are looking for people to work outside and earn dollar. We want every penny. I will even. I'm not even going to be. Uh, giving them the opportunity, I'll be the leader. I'll be make sure I escort them to where they will do the business. He said, I'm looking for everybody that can earn a dollar. He said, forget I'm a businessman. Every opportunity to earn money will be supported for me, by me, personally. Where well, I am as a governor, I look for anybody who was ready to do anything in order for us to generate income. So there's no way I will not be able to do that. You know, I'll support that 24 hours. If you don't know today, the reason why our rate of exchange is worsening every day is because of our reserve. And your reserve is driven by your exports. And you have people who are going to end dollar. <laughs> I mean, they should be encouraged by all means. We'll do everything. When I tell you what I'm going to do by moving the country from consumption to production, you see the reason. As for the issue of those compensate those who died during the Biafra and everything, it's something, again, if you look at my broadcast of um, 15th of January this year, it's really been a broadcast where I said Biafra war has ended 53 years ago and should be remain ended. People should not try to reenact it. And the only way to make it so that it's ended is that we now have to build a country called Nigeria. And that's why I've always said to people, I'm not contesting the election because it is turn of the Southeast. No, I don't want anybody to vote for me on that basis. I'm a proud Igbo man. I'm a proud Southeasterner. But I'm even, I'm even more proud Nigerian. And my 
number one goal is to ensure that from 10 years from now, no Nigerian will ever say, I'm from here, I'm from here. But we'll be proud to raise this green passport and say, I'm a Nigerian. And I have what it takes to do that. It's going to be difficult. People will not be happy. But those people like you who have, are committed and have genuine things you will do, will. But those who are, again, moving around now with too much wealth, without enterprise, will not like it. Because we must get this country to work and work for those who want things to go properly like it's going for in every other country. So in compensating them, there's so many things we need to look at. Maybe we won't compensate them, but maybe we'll, there's the places where we need to apologize. I need to look at what happened in Niger Delta where their land is devastated, we're taking their oil, the place is polluted, they have no life again, they can't go to fishing, they can't do farming, they can't do everything. So there might be places that will go and say, we're sorry, we've done the wrong thing. But however, let the past be past so we can move forward. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, but I hope you're uh, not It's so good here. to have you. Come on, brother. <laughs> what did you say, sir? Not at all. I said, I hope you're not leaving. I want you to stay around. Have hope. I'm on, I'm on set right now filming. I asked for a break to come <laughs> and ask you my question, sir. That's what I'm saying. So I, wa I want us to do... The, the, I'm looking for people like you. We must get this people out of this place and fix it. We must fix it. And believe me, I want people to, to believe in what I'm saying. We'll fix this. We can't go on the way we're going on now. Sir, just so that you know, we have our PVC ready. Thank you. Every Nigerian is armed and ready now with our PVCs. We don't need guns. Yes. We have our PVCs we don't need guns. ready. We don't need guns. We don't ask them to leave quietly. You know, if you shoot guns, you can't you can chase criminals out of the houses. They have more guns than we have. We just have to act okay. them peacefully. Uh, Excellency, um, now decisiveness is very, very important in all of this. Uh, for you to take over Nigeria, how decisive will you deal with issues? Because this is important. I think this is where all our problems starts from, not being able to take a decision. Feel free to eat your excellency. This is, is, is not that kind of show. This is, this is very, please feel free to eat. So now, how decisive will you deal yeah, with I mean, issues? I mean, when you go far about, I want to then take, let me tell you, and why I've been a governor, you can go ask people about me. When I'm in a situation that needs to change, I don't compromise on being decisive. Where we found ourselves today, it must change. There's no way. We have, we have, we have our back on the wall. But there's nothing we can do. When you have your back on the wall, you can't move back again. We've reached the peak. Sure. You know, when it talks about that, when we are, my brother talks talk about CBN, CBN is not our problem. I've said it repeatedly. Our problem is a physical space. Physical space. We need leaders with character, leaders who are competent, leaders who have commitment. It does with compassion. It's very important. So I'm committed to changing this. So, Ex Excellency, uh, I think there's so much love out there for you. There's a video I'm going to, I'm going to show now. I mean, I I think that particular video in a way, projected that reawakening for people to start looking in your direction. Even those 
who did not know who you were at the time, you know, when that video, it was a video, I, I posted it on my page at the time because I was taken aback, like, wow, what kind of love? I, I want to know where all of this is coming from. But before then, let me play the video so that uh, let's have a bit of uh, balance. And then when I come back, I'm going to ask my next question. So let's, let's have that video now. It's the AY Show. And we also have with us tonight, Mr. Peter Obi, who has joined us in for the service this evening. Hallelujah. It's the AY Show. Anyway, don't collect my money since. <laughs> Nana wants to collect your money. <laughs> A lot is going on back home, and I know some of you, you have who you are supporting, you have who you are rooting for. I have been doing this, I did it in other states. Then I say, okay, the capital of Nigeria, in America, we should know where they stand. Quite a lot is going on back home. I want to follow your support to inform my support system. Are you with me? Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you know you are articulate, make some noise. If you know you are articulate, stand up with prayer. I'm sick in progression because I'm recording this. You see, do I have your permission to share this to the world? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, if you know you are a little cop, make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. A little cop, make some noise. Stand up for your noise. Stand up for your noise. Stand up for your noise. Yes, yeah, stand up for your noise. Yeah, yes. Emilio, come. Stand up for your noise. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know you are obedient, make some noise. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. AY Live on Easter Sunday, Legendary Edition, April 9th, coming to you live at the Eco Hotels and Suites. For table reservations and sponsorship, call 0704921548. It's the AY Show. Yeah, Excellency, I just, I, like I said, there's so much love for you out there. I mean, even outside Nigeria, and of course, you you just I, I saw I saw the the visit, the one at the church, and I've seen a couple of rallies. But now, the question is, with all this love, what are the chances that your party can make up the majority in the National Assembly? Because you have rivals, you have people who are doing what they do know how to do best politically. So what are the chances, you know? And of course, in the event that you do not have the House or Senate, how do you plan to, to rule or push any legislation through? Well, I've been asked this question several times and I said to them, I've been in that position. As governor of Anambra State, I do not have one House member from my party. Not one. 
There's 30 over 30 from another party. 30 over 30 that even wear other people's t shirt and come to the crew and everything. I don't I didn't have local government chairman. I didn't have senators. I didn't have anybody in the National Assembly. And I served the state. It is only when you play transnational politics that you are worried about this. Because Senator, where Nigeria is in now, is not safe in his village. So is National as a House of Rep member. Everybody now is insecure. Their parents are insecure. Their relations are insecure. So everybody's running for cover. In a worse situation, all people want is who will do the right thing. And I can tell you, I'm going to take governance to the public, to the Nigerian people. Everything will be transparent. So we don't need to have House members because the Nigerian people will decide whether who is right or wrong. You don't want us to survive. Then it will answer the Nigerian people. There are new employers who now know who they're employing, whether the CEO is the problem, or whether it's the, those who are doing other areas of the job. So this is the time Nigerian people will take governance. That's what I did in Anambra State. I took governance to the people. And when the people started reacting, everybody started doing what they're supposed to do. When I passed the law to return schools to the original owners, not one house member was, was in my party. Hmm. But those who passed knew that uh, the people are watching them. Same thing is what I'm going to do. My budget, my sponsoring to the, everything I'm taking to the National Assembly will be open. It will be transparent. There's no nepotism, which are considered as corruption. There won't be anything. If I select the best team in Nigeria, for example, let's say I'm looking for visa appointment. We're going to have the best team ever. Because I mean, it's not going to be a party affair. It's not going to be, it'll be a Nigerian affair where we're going to get the best. Because I'm in trouble. It's no longer when we say, okay, in this place, let's put a conductor to be doing work of driving. Why? No, 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 no. This is not it. It's, not, it's going to be the best. And if you assemble, then people will see it. Okay, Excellency, uh, I have uh, uh, a friend uh, and a colleague online who is going to be joining us, uh, your priest from Abuja. There. But before then, Ushe Naji, a big time uh, stylist and uh, designer in the fashion world, is also here with us. He has a question or two to ask. Uh, Ushe, how you doing, brother? I'm good, thank you. Your Excellency, good evening, sir. Good evening, Uche. How are you? How are you today? How is the family and everybody? We are fine. Thank you, sir. And thank you for thank you for honoring this invitation to join um, the Nigerians, not just Nigerian youth, Nigerians all over the world to spend a few hours with us. We we appreciate you. We can see you you look tired, but you still came out to join us. God bless you for that. Um, no, you never look your, that when you are looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you said that earlier, and I, I picked that. That is going to trend. You never look tired when you are looking for a job. <laughs> okay, Your Excellency, I'll quickly, I'll talk about, I'll ask about tourism, and one question that I'll tell you, um, when I saw this, I put out the question on my platforms, and I asked people to. Tell me what they will hear, His Excellency, the question they want to ask you. I had 12 people that asked the same question, and these 12 people are not youths. They are people in their late 40s and 50s. Um, the, that question to you, sir, before I ask for my industry and entertainment, that question for you is, how do you plan to deal with the aftermath of fuel subsidy removal? These were asked, as I said, by people in their late 40s and 50s, I mean, my early 40s. But these are, you know, neighbors and older friends on platforms I belong on WhatsApp who said we should ask you that question. 
how do you intend to deal with the aftermath of the fallout if you are elected and we pray you are elected and full subsidy is removed? Um, there's going to be a bit of, you know, like, how do you plan to deal with that, sir? Well, let me ask you a question also as in answering it. One, the reason for removal of first subsidy for me is because it's organized crime. First is that we consume more fuel than we are supposed to consume. We have a population of about 200, 215, 220, because there's no clear census now. So approximately, give and take 10% plus or minus 200. And Pakistan is about the same population. Pakistan have more roads than Nigeria. Yet, their fuel daily consumption is below 50% of ours. That means 50% of ours that is on top and we are subsidizing front length. So I said, mm. those who are drinking that fuel, I'll give them water. That's what they need to live. <laughs> why, would we, why would we take fuel out of the system? The remaining one will remove the subsidy. Because no country can operate the way. Let me just give you an example with this year's budget without going to the past. This year's annual budget for education, which is the highest ever, is two trillion. This year's budget for health, which is the highest ever, is 1.5 trillion. That's actually 1 trillion, 550 something billion. That's the highest ever. So these two most critical components of development, health and education, their budget, annual budget for 2023, which is the highest ever, is 3.5 trillion annual budget. First subsidy for six months of this year is 3.6 trillion. Which there is nobody 